um, happy new month so in the month of first week right of the twenty. I'm just live on YouTube. I'm going to be sharing it later on Facebook. Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Ezawani Mili Esther Ihechi Marina. I'm from Mwaha North Local Government Area of Abia States. I live and reside here in Echo Lego State. My name is Yo. Okay. As I said, I'm just live on YouTube. I'm not live on Facebook. I'm going to be sharing them. I'm going to be sharing later on Facebook. Please listen. Love is beautiful. Love is sweet. Marriage is beautiful. Marriage is sweet. Relationships are beautiful. Relationship is sweet. But the issue here is that a lot of people a lot of people I'm, I'm i'm doing this live video teachings based on the kind of people some type of people that come across my way now a lot of people go into relationship or marriages with a particular intention with a particular mindset that will not go well with them. A lot of people view relationships and marriage as a place of love only, a place of him loving me alone, she loving me alone, being there for me, he doing things to prove that they love me. These things are not bad per se. But the way the way things are going, if this issue is, it will get out of hand if it has not gotten out of hand right now. A lot of people, when they have done whatever it is that they are doing, done whatever it is that they do, and they're not able to see uh, evidence. They are not able to make it. They are not able to touch something in their hand. They are not able to uh, uh, acquire or live a certain lifestyle. They don't have what it takes to live a certain lifestyle. They will go into relationship. It is wrong. They have this mindset of entitlement entitlement if he loves me he should do this if she loves me she should do this okay when somebody loves you they will do what they can in their capacity to make you happy they won't do what you expect them to do most times they will do more but they will do whatever it's in their power in their capacity to make you happy. But when people begin to expect he should have done it this way, she should have done it this way, it is supposed to be this way, it is supposed to be that way to make me happy. But you forgot that you have not done that. You cannot do that. You not. You have not. You might not do the same thing to make them happy. Much expectations, real yes. relationships, even before they start. You know why my teachings, why my talks, my lectures are based on women as if I hate women. I don't hate women. I'm a woman. I'm a woman. But when the truth is coming from a woman, they don't like it. Women don't like truths coming from a woman. They like the truth coming from a man. To them, it's not an insult. Okay? It's normal. Sometimes they accept it. Sometimes they don't accept it. But when it's coming from a woman, it becomes a taboo. No, why would a woman say that? But you know what I'm saying. A lot of problems in marriages and relationships are physical. 
they are not spiritual or whatever. They are not uh, witches and wizards or my family or my friends and well wishers or my brother don't want me to get married. No. Majority of them are physical problems that should be dealt physically. That should have been handled physically, not spiritually. A lot of you only need counseling. Somebody go to a, 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 a relationship therapist or whatever, whatever, to talk about it, not to go to your pastor. Because most religions don't know how to handle relationships and marriages to them. It is the devil. So you got to pray and fast. If you don't pray and fast, then forget about it. So it's the devil that's making the marriage not to work. It is the devil. It is something that your mother or your father might have done. It is something that somebody did that is working against you. You know, these are stories that women love to hear. They don't want to hear that the problem might have arise from them. They don't want to be told that they have their own work to do for that, marriage, for that relationship. So they don't like it. So they prefer where they will go and uh, blame the devil, blame uh, uh, ancestors, blame the, or that. And they are happy. They compare each other's husband to themselves. They compare, you know, the comparison between, oh, my marriage and your marriage, or oh, my blessing and your, you know, these are things that ladies like to hear. I have hardly, it's only out of the hundred people that comes across my way concerning marital issues, it is only 2% that say that it is my fault. It came from me. I should have done this. I didn't do it. My husband is a nice man. This is what happened. This is what happened. The others blamed the man. They blamed the man. They want me to do consultation or be and everything. And after everything, I tell them, this is what I see. This is where you are wrong. This is what you have done. They said, no, I'm fake. I don't know what I'm talking about. But last, last, after spending all the little they have, they say boil down the same thing and they say come back to me. Why didn't you listen in the first place? Marriage is not a place of joy, peace. Oh, just for you, you know. Marriage is not a place of peace, joy, love, caring for you alone. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. If you are not willing and ready to condone some kind of things, it don't get into marriage. Don't do that. It's not going to pay you. Yes, yeah, some people are lucky. What you call lucky. You can call it luck. You can call it anything. But you don't know what they put in. They walk. The sleepless night. The spiritual work. The whatever they put in. To get to that level. Yesterday, I went out. As I was coming back, I saw a group of teenagers talking about something. And as I passed, I walked across. I walked walk past them. I heard that I just quickly slow down to hear them. They were talking about uh, about river, stream, beach, drowning. One said, if somebody is drowning, uh -uh, no need of panic, just relax. Just relax. Don't, don't try to fight it. Just try if you can remove, you have heavy things. Remove, just don't, before you know, just calm down. When you calm down, you now, you know, before you know it, you need to, you start floating up. You start floating up. I was listening. Every one of them was, were giving their own opinion. They said, ah, no, somebody's drowning. Ha. Ah. No how, no how, the person with that, you know, they were giving their own opinion in their own age. Every one of them was right. Every one of them was wrong. And in that, their discussion, it was night. I slowed down. I brought out my phone, pretended, put my phone in an airplane mode and pretending to be answering call so that I can listen to them. Their, 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 their analysis about drown, drowning is so innocent and so pure and so good that it's believable. And I begin to find out that if some of them, as I counted about eight or nine or thereabouts, yes, or, uh, among them, they are all boys. And I said, and, you know, when I was, I, I was listening to them, I began to realize that when they finally grow up, one or two will take the advice they are being shared within themselves. The others will fail it automatically. 
And I begin to understand that these boys have never had the experience of drowning. They have never seen big amount of water. They have not experienced what drowning is all about. They have not been caught in the midst of storms and waves. They have not, they have not entered a, a, a canoe or, or, or ship or, or boat that capsized in the middle of the ocean. They don't know, they have never experienced the act of drowning, the, the helplessness, the fear of being drowned. They have not been thrown into the river where they did not see any, any, any sign of hope. No tree trunk to hold on to. Nobody throwing a rope for them to catch. So they were just talking based on their own understanding. They have never seen body of water as huge as. Probably they have gone to, one or two have gone to the to swimming pool. Maybe that was where that one got that you know, a little bit, a little bit experience of drowning. Or maybe they might have seen it in a movie. So there we are giving their own uh, way of escape. Do it this way. When we do it this way, it's going to be this way. When you do it this way, it's going to be this way. And I was just listening to them. I was listening to them. As an adult, we have this thing of trying to butt in our head. I, at first, I wanted to stop and stop and explain to them, what are you talking about? You know, adults, we are so good in putting our mouth where it's not supposed to be put because after you're an adult. As an adult, I wanted to tell them about drowning, how some of my friends drowned in the village, very big river. I wanted to tell them how it is that I myself nearly drowned. You know, it is in us to give solicited advice. Oh, do it this way, don't do it this way. I had that very big, mighty urge to stop and do what? Explain to them what drowning is all about. And I, as I wanted to do that, and I told myself, I said, no, they need to experience life. They need to experience life. I don't need to shatter their illusions. They are not going to live my life for me. I am not going to live their life for them. I am not going to keep, you know, you know, help them along the way not to get hurt because they are not my children. Even if they are my children, they will still have to go through it to understand what it is. It is not for me now to shatter their illusions that if being thrown into the, the, the ocean or the river, they can simply apply one or two of their techniques and survive they might probably survive they might not survive i quench that urge a lot of you are like that giving unsolicited advices to the young couple married couple you know my marriage i did this i did that my husband now is under my foot i did this i did that my wife is under my foot your marriage and their marriage is not the same everybody must go through it in as much as spirituality awakening religion is helping you not to take responsibility of your marriage of your relationship you still have lots of work to do the pain will be with you you can pretend you can do everything do all the spiritual work expect the man to be mumu expect the woman to be mumu it is you that wear the shoes that know where it pains you if you don't do your own side of the work you will still live with regret every day. Everybody might see your face as, oh, she's beautiful. Oh, she has the best marriage. But it is you that knows the truth. Okay? When you lay all your eggs in a basket of, relig of, of, of religion, of believing that, that your forefathers, your foremothers, your ancestors will turn your husband brain upside down. It's not going to happen. It is not your ancestor that got married to that man or to that woman. It is you. 
relationship is beautiful. Marriages are beautiful. But most of what you people are seeking for is what you should have handled if you, if it made use of your senses. No matter how I talk about marital relationships and all the whole rest of them and their love issues, and it is you who will accept if you want to. If you want to listen, you listen. If you don't want to listen, you don't listen. Depression, hunger, and the rest of them have pushed a lot of relationships and marriages. Yes. Hunger, depression of all type, poverty have pushed a lot of you to things that you know nothing about. A lot of these people, women that comes to me, I don't understand. Sometimes I pray, I ask my spiritual guides, allow me to collect money. Allow me to take money from these people because that's the only language they hear. That's the only language they understand. How can you, a full-blown lady, you have nothing doing? Probably you are a sales girl. Being a sales girl is not bad. Having your own petty business is not bad. But what is your idea? What is your visions and dream? Are you doing sales girl so that you can get a little money and learn a trade and upgrade yourself? No, you are not doing that. You just see yourself in that tiny cubicle. You don't want to further your education. There are a lot of uh, 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 evening schools. There are a lot of uh, outer. Uh, um, there's a lot of weekend programs. There are a lot of business, uh, 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 business lectures, business whatever going on. But your own is. If I can get married, you know, a lot of people, as soon as they get married, their responsibilities, their family responsibilities, their long-term responsibilities will be rest upon the man. If the man is not doing it, it's not man enough. No longer will he have respect or love or submissiveness or whatever it is that you are looking for. When you begin to see a lot of married women having extramarital affairs, when you begin to see a lot of married women having high blood pressure, going through all kind of craziness, you begin to blame the devil. The devil has nothing to do with this. Witches and wizards have nothing to do with this. Side chick does not have anything to do with this. It is you. You want to respect, you want to be treated this way. Have you treated yourself that way? Because of depression and all kinds of things, a lot of you have married beneath you. Yes. A lot of you have married beneath you. Because of, you know, all the, I don't know, all the rigmarole, all those, everything. You married beneath you. And when you entered here, did you step out of that marriage? No. Did you try to better yourself? No. Did you try to make that marriage meaningful? No. You begin to channel it and term it spiritual. That man become evil becomes bad. Yeah, there are a lot of men who are bad and evil. There are a lot of women who are bad and evil. You come to my WhatsApp, you come to my DM, most time I answer them, most time I don't answer, most times I get so pissed off. I don't understand. You have not been able to take care of your lovingly to enter into a relationship, to bring up children that you don't even know how to take care of. It is the man's responsibility. He should have done that. He should be able to do this. No wonder when the man no longer have it, you become something else. No longer, no, no, no wonder when the man dies, you don't know how to do anything. You descend so low, so low that eh, 
death will be pitying you. What is wrong with us, some of us African women? You begin to, you begin to, okay, put yourself in a condition that the devil will be proud of you. You begin to wallow in self-pity. Pain, shame, ridicule. You begin to kill yourself. Oh, he did. And after everything I did for him, I was with him when he had nothing. I was with him. Okay, if you were with him when he had nothing, it simply means you have nothing. So as he was busy climbing up, trying to better himself, you were not doing the same. You were not doing the same. You see, one of the things I don't understand with some of these, some of these African marriages is that how can you get married instantly? You start having children. That is another thing that is very, 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 very dangerous. You start popping up children here and there. Pop, 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 pop. Start pumping them out. You didn't enjoy the marriage. You've not gotten to know each other very well, irrespective of how many years that you, you both dated. You begin to pop up children left to right, front to back, up and down. I don't understand. Does it show you are a responsibly married woman? Does it show you are, show that you are a, 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 a mother indeed? What does it mean? You begin to pop up children left and right, front and back. No savings, no plans. How do we just, how is it that some Africans, as soon as they get married, as soon as they get married, give it, give it a few months, they expect to fruit of the womb. As if it's something that is elusive, you need to find it, you need to grab it before it runs out of your finger, you need to rush and do it before everyone else takes yours. No plans of in the next five years can we do this. No, no, no plan of in the next 10 years, in the next of in the, in the next eight years. No, every plan depends on the man. What of what if his plans fall short along the way? What if something happens because that is change? What if his business is no longer moving? I don't get it. Everybody's complaining. Some of them, they are, whose husband is so rich, they keep complaining. He does not give me. He does not. He does not. He does not. He does not do this. He does not do this. He does not. He does not. He does. I don't understand. Is it? Is it? Is it a taboo for a, a, for you to have money? Is it, is it an abomination for you as a wife to be richer than your husband or to be as rich as your husband? You know, a lot of men, a lot of men don't marry, don't date women who are financially stable. They don't like it. After all, what else will he use to oppress you? What else will he use to keep you submissive? What else will he use to tell you to sit at a place and don't cough? So he marries somebody like you because he knows who you are. He marries somebody like you because that's all. So that he can be dishing you kobo kobo afu afu. And you say that he's a devil, or which is a wizard that is working against your marriage. No. The man that marries you knows who you are, knows why you came to him. But do you know who you are? You have not enjoyed life even as a single girl. You, you, you admire a lot of ladies that look like this, look like this because you want to look like that. And because you don't have what it takes to live that life, you hop into marriage. You jump into relationship. You hop into whatever. And when that man is not doing it, you begin to, to time him. You begin to date his friends. You begin to date others to meet up. And before you know it, you have become what you said you will not become. That name you call girls, oh, he, she's a prostitute. Oh, she they do a low show. Oh, you begin to do a low show back, at the background. And last, last, when all this multiple life begin to tell on you, begin to weigh you down, begin to depress you, you now hop into, I say somebody said, I went somewhere, they said, I went that place, they said, they said, it's my spiritual husband that's doing me. 
Oh, they said, she said, I said, I'm not doing orumi. I am not as a one. I have a calling. I'm not a pastoress. I'm not a prophetess. Instead of you to try to better yourself, find a way out of this pit, this hole that you put yourself into, you begin to dig more lies. You begin to create more lies, more illusions to feed in yourself, to feed in your ego, to feed into whatever it is you are. Until finally you become exhausted. You become exhausted. I keep saying it. I keep saying it. I won't stop. I said, if you, if you are bold enough to begin to have relationship, to have sex, if you are bold enough to accept the ring, be bold enough to ask him, to tell him, I don't want to be a housewife. Oh. I don't want to be this. So oh. I don't want to be that too. After two years, before we start looking for children, before we start having babies, so after five years, so I will finish going to school. Oh. I will see further my education. Oh. A lot of people said they want to, they will further their education. They got into marriage. And before you know it, the man said, no way, you can't. No way. Oh, no wife of mine will go back to university. No wife of mine will go and learn work. No wife of mine will go and learn a trade. And you accept. I'm not telling you to insult your husband or to disobey your husband. And you accept. But that was the agreement from day one. Right now, you know that time, that Ebidosia or Nato, you know the beginning of relationship is so sweet. Oh, everything is so wonderful. Everything is so beautiful. Then later you find out that change happens to you. You find out that change is something that will happen to anybody and everybody. What happens? You begin to go to your pastor and to your dad in the Lord and your mommy in the Lord and go to SN1 and native doctors to change the mind of a man. So that they can do work for you that will turn the man brain upside down. So that when you're talking, go hear you. So that when you cough, he go hear you. If you have make hay while the sun shine, it would have been easy. If you had started looking for the black goat in the daytime, it would have been easy. A stitch in time would have saved your nine. Everything is not spiritual issue, spiritual problem, spiritual. Something you got to do by yourself. Some experiences you got to find out by yourself. There are journeys that you got to take alone. Okay? Discipline is you suffering today and enjoying tomorrow. Being disciplined is suffering right now. You suffering right now to enjoy tomorrow. Tell yourself the truth. Tell yourself the truth. Okay? If you are some, one of those people who said, eh, people will say, I'm now divorcee. Keep lying to yourself. Make something out of your life now that you are able to, now that you can. Marriage is not a place of, oh, he loves me, I love him. Oh, no. It's a place of work. It's a place of hard, intense work. Most time, it's a place of hardship, loneliness, pain, shame. It's a place one person is the Lord and Master. It's a place you don't have a say. But if you have a say before you enter it, that will be mutual understanding. If he doesn't like it, then he will go to marry somebody who like that. Why you will meet somebody who like it? think this teaching is not for you to hate your husband it's not uh, this teaching is not uh, it's not to body shame a man or to insult a man no it's for you to think to listen as for men a lot of them don't like change by the time they discuss with their friend that their wife want to go to say hey her eyes is outside her eyes is outside she have developed wings she wants to start doing this. But you and I know why you married the girl. It's because nobody in her family has anything. She does not have anything. 
So you married her. She's submissive because her family depends on you. So the day she grew up and want to make a change, you get offended after all, who knows the man who is speaking to her outside. The ball is in your court, whether you're a man or a woman. Let's do the right thing. When we begin to make use of our heads, our God-given oboro brain, you find out that spirituality, religion, have their own side, have their own work, have their own things to do, that you have to work on yourself. When you work on yourself, work on your path, when you work on your, your life, your experiences, and own up to who you are, you begin to know and understand what you should accept and what you should not accept. Okay? Spirituality is not where you come and turn the mind of your husband. You accepted him the way he is. At the beginning, he knows who you are. Work on yourself. A lot of you will make good teachers. A lot of you will make good authors, writing of books and nursery rhymes and poetry. A lot of you will make good teachers. Okay? Motivational speakers. A lot of you will... Oh my God, so many. And now change has come knocking at your door. And you have seen your destiny, what you need to do. But fear of, what if I leave now, what will I do? My people will not accept me. I don't have any money. Where will I go? You never had any money from day one. You had nothing. You accepted whatever that is called marriage. You know, what is happening now is not marriage. What is happening now is what a lot of, a lot of ladies have called poverty alleviation center, which they call marriage. And when the thing is not happening the way they expect it to happen, you know, a lot of you believe that on bed, when you give the man this style and that style, you are able to change his mindset. Now that it's not happening, now that it's not happening, what is going on? You have become depressed, hurting yourself because what you expected is not what you are seeing. And the ladies like me who are no longer in marriage, we are bad people, you are a good person. And you are dying in silence. You better wake up and make a right decision. If nothing good comes easy, if it comes easy, it's not yours. Mm. We, I am the person that is suffering, so in now, to enjoy and harvest tomorrow. So you can't say you want to look like me, you want to be like me. No, you can't go through what I, I'm going through. You can't go through what I've gone through. I cannot go through what you are going through. I cannot go through what you have gone through. To each his own journey, her own journey. But I am the person who is walking in my journey, in fear, in humbleness, in loneliness, in pain, shame, and ridicule, in joy, in tears. I embrace whatever comes my way because I know that it is temporary. So that my tomorrow will be beautiful, will be great. If you don't work on it today, sorrow is waiting for you up there. Okay? As I said, marriage is good. Marriage is sweet. Relationships are good and sweet. If you know what it entails, Okay? If I feel like drinking, I will go and drink. I don't need to call you to tell you that I want to go and drink. But in relationship, in marriages, you can't go and drink until you were told to go and drink or you were taken out. But I can go and drink because I feel like drinking. And I don't have that strength to take permission from anybody. I have owned up to my truth that I can't do that marriage or relationship stuff. Maybe later, maybe one day, I don't know. I am not hoping or praying for it. If it comes, it comes. If it doesn't come, it doesn't come. But right now, I owe myself the responsibility of disciplining myself, of being true to myself, of understanding the kind of person I am. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Okay, happy holidays. It's well with you and I. So... Bye-bye. Take care of yourself.